last day of class. Um, first things first, our final exam next Monday, the 10th, uh, 10.30 in the morning till one in the afternoon, two and a half hours. Uh, as I said before, I'll add time to that. I will make the due time 1.15, but I'm still gonna write this and anytime anyone asks, like when I send my, uh, I'll send a reminder probably, I guess, since it's Monday, probably next Sunday uh, about it. And it's still going to say till 1 p.m. Because I want to make sure, absolutely positively sure this time, that everyone turns it in by the time that it's due. Somehow that was still, there were still problems with that after the last one, even though I really don't think there were supposed to be problems with that. Um, the test has to be it. It does not matter what Blackboard's timer says. It matters what the clock on the wall or your watch says. And that means turn it in before 1.15. All right. I had a couple of problems. And this is legitimately a, a, a question where people have turned it in at 10.10. But it said it was late. And that's because it was due at 10 10 and zero seconds not 10 10 and 30 seconds that's how it was reading it so again you want to avoid even that problem turn it in in this case at well turn it in at one o'clock that would be the best way submit it by then but for sure by 1 13 just to make sure um it's going to accept it because i am not arguing about any of those anymore it's it's over if it's late then it is just late that is a problem we shouldn't still be having for the final exam make sure you submit it before the due time of 115 not whatever blackboard or proctorio is telling you is left on the clock that is not what counts all right so it's 115 not one it it will be due at 115. I'm still saying one o'clock. Just to do just it. so that you guys turn it in, in time. <laughs> I feel like feel like if I said 115, people are gonna start pushing the limits again. And I'm gonna have to answer more emails after this test, like I did after the last one. All right. Uh, so is the window is the do we have is the window for the test due an hour for 50 minutes or is it still? Oh, no, it's two and a half. Yeah. So we can work on the problems from 1030 to 1. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's the big, big thing about that. Um, in terms of the review, I didn't put, uh, I mean, I guess I, I could. We still have a week. But um, I, I don't really think I'm going to do a separate final exam review like I did for the test because it would just be literally those exact same problems from the test reviews. Uh, <clears throat> it'd just be all those, the ones where you can click and watch video and all that kind of stuff. So it would it'd just be grouping all those together. So just go through each of those individually. That's a, that's a final exam review. Each of the, the old test reviews would be the exact same thing that I put on there, all right? go through some of the old homeworks um, and then uh, the other best thing to use to study off of would be the actual tests that we've taken so go back and go through those look at the answers that you've got right and wrong which one's the right answer all that kind of stuff if i don't know how to do that so <clears throat> If, so would, if we focus, put a lot of our focus on the actual test, would that be a good good study? Like, oh no, we need to go like review. It's always good to review the reviews, but if we review the test, is that going to be the, the basic gist of the yes. test? Yeah. Okay. The only thing that won't be on the, the, the only thing that you wouldn't see if you studied the tests. Is chapter eight. Is chapter eight. Okay. All right, um, I know I showed this last time, or I thought it, maybe it was for the other class. But if you want to go back and check the answers, go into the test, hit begin, let it come up, 
commit. Blah. Oh, this one doesn't have it. Which one did I use last? Oh, wait. I need to go to student view. Hold on. It's this one. All right, let's try this again. Go into the test. Or you just use all the answers? Again. Well, they're all up there. Yeah, I mean, you'll, you should be able to see them. It just doesn't work. It doesn't do this if it's in the, oh, the instructor view or whatever. Um, view all attempts and then go to your grade. My This one's obviously since I didn't take the test. Um, or I, I guess I did last time. It's not graded. Uh, but click on whatever number's there. There'll be your, your numerical grade will be there. Click on that and you can see all of this stuff. All right. It'll give you the answer that you gave. It'll give you the right answer. You can check which ones you got right, which ones you got wrong, all that kind of stuff. And you can do that for each test. They should all be available to, to go in and check. So that's how you go through the old test. And as I was saying, that is definitely the best way to study because <clears throat> um, I'm not going to throw anything new from those. I, ideally, what I would do is, you know, find problems that are essentially the exact same types of problems and just put them all up there. But that's going to be a few too many. But what I'm saying is I won't take any problems from elsewhere. Like you'll see the same types of problems that are on here on the final exam. Just I, there will be fewer from each test, but there will be more overall. All right. What are you looking at? I'm looking at probably 20 is what I'm I'm trying to sit around, which should be, I mean, plenty of time with two and a half hours because we've had between, what, 12 and 15 for our tests. And those were, those were okay. But I, I want to stick to around 20, maybe 21, 22. Um, we have a lot of extra time there. All right. So definitely looking over the old tests and those types of problems is, I would say, the absolute best way to study. And then going through the, the test reviews from the previous parts is also a good thing. All right. And then just going through chapter eight also. OK. Oh, having said that, I did want to make one other announcement. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reopen the homework assignments so that you can go back and do them if you have any that are missing or you just want to improve the grade or anything like that. Um, I'll reopen them until Sunday night, so I'll give you almost a week to do them. Uh, I normally wouldn't do that, but since finals are starting up, I want to make sure people have times in between there where they're studying. So the homework will be open um, until Sunday night. All the assignments that you have in this the assignment that's due today, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and extend until next Sunday also. But very important to note this right now. I've already gone through and checked the assignments that are submitted so far. So any the the rule for replacing a test grade with the final exam grade. If you have, well, on the syllabus, it's two or fewer missing assignments. Um, that's, our, that's already applied. You can't go back and do the missing homeworks that you have now and have it count for that. I said that the first day. It is to reward you for keeping up with the homeworks along the way the whole time. So don't you're not going to get that. I already recorded how many assignments are missing from everyone. They're already in the grade book. It's unchangeable not going to do that. So if you're worried <laughs> that you're on the line there uh, and you don't know which ones count as missing and which ones count as actually being completed, um, you can ask me. The other thing about that, I will say this, I know it says on the syllabus two or fewer. We had 30, well, if you include today's, which isn't in the total, we had 32 assignments. So I'm going to make it four or fewer missing assignments so that you can still replace a test grade, all right, with the final exam grade, because that's still, I mean, out of 30, 
out of the 31 that we've already had. So you're going to take probably good. So you're going to take the three best out of the four grades. Is that what you're saying? Out of which the finals? No, 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 no. So the final exam grade can replace any one of the the three test grades up to this one, the lowest one, if it's higher than that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're going yeah. to drop our lowest score if it's if the finals higher. Yes. Okay. If you have four or fewer missing homework assignments. All right, so but the final's gonna to have to be on there no matter what. The final counts no matter what, yes. Okay. Yeah, definitely. All right. So if you're not sure where where you're at, you can ask me again. I mean if you wanna if you wanna argue whether or not one should count as missing or not. I know I said at the very beginning, you know, get to fifty percent and you can guarantee that it counts. If you only did a couple of problems and made a couple attempts, um and it was the ones that I did in class, then that doesn't count as an assignment being done. So <clears throat> if you have like a 20% a on one, chances are I'm not counting that one as being a completed assignment. That one's counted as missing. Um, so if you have questions about that, you wanna know whether you're gonna be able to replace a test grade with your final exam grade, shoot me an email and I'll let you know what I have down there. And then you can go back, redo any missing assignments, figure everything out. Um, I think, I, I believe this class, my lab weights everything equally already. So the grade that you can see in my lab should be the grade that you have as a homework grade if you're looking to calculate things. Uh, right. So how, how would we be able to determine the what we would need to make on our final to like maintain a certain grade average? Uh, so what you could do, here's how I have it in, here's how I have it in my grade book. Uh, take your homework average, multiply it by 0.15 since it counts for 15%. Take your, each test grade is 20%, so test one, test two, and test three. So add all of them together and then multiply by 15 or 20? 20. 20. 20. I mean, you could do it individually. 20. But it's the, it just gets distributed across the whole thing. So it's I know that looks weird. This is how I have it in my grade book because remember, technically I'm multiplying this to each of them. But I just make it easier on myself by doing that. But that's 60% of the grade right there. Right? And then plus the final exam is 25%. So the only thing that, if you wanna calculate what you have right now, and then what you would need on the final, then you can go ahead and just pick a number for the final exam and see what you'd get out of that. Um, the other thing that you would have to change, I, don't, I, have it, I have it set up to do it automatically, in the grade book. But the other thing is, if you got like, a, if you wanted to see what would happen if you got a an 80 on the final and it replaced the first test grade, make sure to replace that with an 80 also. All right. So, but if you leave the final grade as a zero, would it tell you what you would make without the grade at all? If you put uh, zero if, in as If your final you wanted grade? to know like where you sit right now without the final exam counting, then all is, that what, do, is that what's already up there? Oh. What you would do is take all of this and divide it by 0.75 since there's only 75% being counted. That would give you your that would give you your current grade at the moment. But at this point, it's probably less helpful than the other one. I'm trying to figure out what you need. All right. So yeah, that's how. That's how I have, this is actually technically how I have it in the grade book right now, in case people ask about grades, but I change it to the other one. Good deal. Um, I feel like there's something else. No, I said stuff about, oh, are there any questions on the homework for today? I usually start off with that. Probably should have done that again. That, I mean, I don't think there was too much tricky with that stuff. And there weren't a whole lot of uh, weren't a whole lot of weird problems, but 
if you have any over 8.2, you can ask them today. And that way you don't have to ask them through email. All right. Um, Monday, 10.30 a.m. That's when this will open. I'm not going to open early because it's departmental final. Everything opens at the same time. Um, 10.30 a.m. Turn it in at 1 and you won't have any problems. If you, I will make the I will make the due time 1.15 p.m. I want to be extremely clear. Hopefully this is the last thing that's on here so people actually see it. I said it earlier. Spent time on this before. If you turn it in at 118, it is late and it counts as nothing. It's zero, right? If you turn it in at 116, it's zero. If you turn it in at 115 in 25 seconds, it's going to count it as late and zero. So turn it in at, well, turn it in at one o'clock, all right? Or 105, 110. Get a clock or a watch or something. I know, again, People have already told me this. I know it takes up the full screen and you can't necessarily see the clock on your computer. It's not the timer on Blackboard. It is the actual time of day when it's due. So that's the reason I'm adding 15 minutes at the end. I know it takes a few minutes to start up Proctorio, get everything settled. Um, so I'm giving you that extra time at the end. That doesn't mean you, you're gonna have two and a half hours plus 15 minutes, it means you're gonna have whatever you have after you sign in there, all right? Up to 114 and 59 seconds. Is that 100% clear? I know I'm asking this of people that are probably either have already been here and were paying attention the first time I said this for, for the third test and the people that really need to hear it probably aren't, aren't listening. Um, but you know, I, again, now I still have a record of it, just like I did for the third test <clears throat> to say, hey, this is what I told you guys. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not changing that anymore. All right. Are there any questions on that? All right. It'll still be on, on Blackboard through Proctorio, all the same stuff that we've done. It'll just be a little bit longer. It'll include, it'll probably be about even from the first three tests like 30% from test one and 30% from two and 30% from three and then 10% from the couple of sections of chapter eight that we've done. Maybe even less than 10%, but again, I don't know the exact number of problems that I'm gonna have up there. So if it was 20, that would actually probably be about right. Two questions from chapter eight, and six from each of the other tests. All right. That's all I got y'all unless you have questions on any homework problems or anything like that um, or anything else that you want to talk about we have four questions sure okay the first one is uh, in chapter one test okay it's uh, cosecant squared 315 minus sine squared 270 plus four tangent squared 30. so cosecant squared 315 no i mean i'm cosine i'm sorry Cosine squared is 315 minus sine squared of 270 plus 4 tangent squared of 30. I'm just asking to find that. Yeah. So, but then, all right. Since these are going to be uh, special trig angles, all we need to do is really plug in. Just remember that when we're saying like cosine squared or sine squared or tangent squared, it means, you know, cosine of 315 degrees, whatever that is, we're just squaring that answer, right? Or whatever sine of 270 is, squaring that. Whatever tangent of 30 is, we're squaring that answer. So that's what that really means. It's just written that way so that we so that we don't square the 315 degrees and take cosine of that just to avoid confusion but so cosine of 315 degrees would be what so that's in the fourth quadrant 
Square root two over two. Yeah, it's going to have a reference angle of 45 degrees. So cosine negative. is positive. Cosine in the fourth quadrant is positive. positive. Not that it matters since we're squaring it, but I mean it does matter in in very in every other context. It makes a difference. So sine of 270 degrees. B negative one. Yeah, it's just here. And then tangent of 30 degrees. Be uh, 102 times square root here. To be opposite. So it would be 3 over 2. Okay, so. Be, so you can do, I mean, you can do either square root of 3 over 3. You can do 1 over square root of 3. Uh, if, you're, if you're rationalizing that, then you, that's square root of 3 over 3. That'd be the same thing. In this case, since we're squaring it, I, you don't even necessarily need to do that. So it would just be 1 over 3? Yeah. So this would just be 2 over 4 minus 1 plus 4 times 1 over 3. So 1 half minus 1 plus 4 thirds. That would give me... Four thirds minus one half. So, how did you do all that? Nothing. Just just simplified these so far. Okay. So, but I, but I need to get the LCD right. Uh, I believe if you're doing this as a, uh, yeah, as a problem yeah. or anything there. So, four times two that'd be eight over six, and then minus three over six. So five six. So you just canceled out the one? Huh? So no, I just uh, I just did one half minus one here to get the negative one half. Right? Yeah. So if we're given those values. Um, and we know those special trig angles. Actually, this does remind me of the other thing I wanted to say that I said a second ago. Um, on the test, on the final exam, I'm going to only pick the simpler ones. So this, I mean, I guess this could kind of help you even figure out what to study on the third test. I'm only going to pick the ones that you can do with the special trig angles and things like that. So on the final exam, we're back to no calculators. Um, everything you'll be able to do, you'll be able to do with the, the angles that we know, is either the reference angles, the special trig angles, and get those exact values. All right. So no calculators on the final exam. Back to that. Ready for another one? Yep. Let's do it. Uh, it's, it's a sum or difference identity. It's a tangent of negative 15. Tangent of negative 15. And we're just trying to find the exact value for that. Yeah. So I want to come up with a couple of angles that we know so I can find the exact values of them. The easiest way to get negative 15 degrees would be what? Using the special trigger angles. Yeah, 30 minus 45? Yeah. So it's going to be a difference identity for tangents. So I got it right on the, but I, I just missed the sign. Positive negative. Okay. That's where I messed up on it. So. Okay. What's the difference identity for tangent? We'll just kind of review that since it'll be one thing to. It'll be tangent about. A. Actually, let's, let me write it that way. Tangent A times tangent B minus B yeah. over tangent AB. B. Tangent of A, tangent of B over 1 minus. Tangent A, tangent B. So I'm just going to plug in 30 for A, 45 for B. So 
wouldn't be a negative forty-five. Negative tangent forty-five. No, no, no. Oh, in in this case, yeah. So the the negative part just accounts for that sign that's in the denominator, but the the actual angle B in that case is is forty-five degrees. Okay. The professor. Yeah. Sheet, uh, Tangent A minus B equals tangent A minus tangent B over 1 plus tangent A. Oh, wait. I was thinking of a double angle where you multiply them together at the top. So tangent A plus B, and then. So it's tangent of A. Then you multiply them on the bottom, right? Minus tangent of B on the top. Right? Um, you said tangent A minus tangent B over 1 plus tangent A tangent B. Yeah. I was, yeah. I knew I got that confused. I was using a double angle there where we added the two or subtracted them on the top. Um, yeah, definitely go back over those. Yeah, I was like, something's wrong. I knew there was a two signs with this. All right, tangent A minus tangent B over one plus tangent A tangent B. Still plugging in. And that changes though if you use a, if you got A plus B identity, doesn't it? Or does that matter? That what would change if, if this was plus is that the sign on the top would be plus and the one on the bottom would be negative, it would be minus. Same format, just yeah, switch the signs. Right. Now you can just plug in from there, I guess. In this case, it would want it to be simplified, so we're gonna have to look at that. Let's go ahead and do that. We just said this one was one over square root of three or square root of three over three. That's not gonna be enough for me. One. Then tangent of 45 is just one. So the easiest way to simplify this is actually going to be, uh, since it, simplifying in this case would mean at least, at the very least, not to have fractions inside of fractions, then we're gonna have to simplify the bottom as well. But if I have the square root of three over three minus one over one plus square root of three over three, then I can just multiply the top and the bottom by three to get rid of those fractions. We'll have the square root of three minus three on the top and three plus the square root of three on the bottom. And then to rationalize that denominator, I'm gonna need to do what? Uh, the co, uh, the yes, pretty close. The conjugate, yeah, conjugate. So I need to multiply by three minus the square root of three on the top and the bottom. There's full technique, right? Huh? Yeah, use, use the foil on top, and and you don't necessarily need it for. Um, the denominator, you can remember that's the difference of squares because a plus b times a minus b is just a squared minus b squared. So three squared minus the square root of three squared. I'll write that. Actually, I'm going to write that out in this case. But yeah, always, I mean, that's again, that's the reason we do it is because when we foil it out, and you can do this by foiling uh, the denominator too. But when we foil it out, those outside and inside terms, and middle terms cancel out. And that's why we don't have any square roots left over. On the top, it doesn't work that way, but three square root of three, we'll have minus uh, square root of three times negative square root of three, or sorry, minus square root of three times square root of three. And then minus three times three and plus Three square root of three. So when I simplify all of this down, I have six square root of three minus three minus nine. 
over nine minus three. So it's six, okay, you add, okay. Yeah, add the, the ones that have the square root. Of it. So when I simplify everything in the numerator and then the denominator, six squared to three minus 12 over six, and I can factor a six out of each term on the top and cancel it out, we'll just have the square root of three minus two. Make sure if you, when you simplify this part, cancel the six with this six and with the six in the second term. Don't just do it for one of them because that is not no way. Right. So yes, unfortunately, normally, I mean, if I was at, if, if we were just doing this by hand and I could hand this out, I would probably would normally say once you got it to, well, once you got it to that point up there where, you know, where you plugged in for the special trig angles and you use the, the difference identity, I'd probably normally be okay with that as an answer. But since we're doing this through, you know, the answer pools from my lab and stuff like that, they're almost certainly always going to ask you to rationalize denominators and all that good stuff. Like we've been doing the whole time. All right. Uh, the next one is uh, cosecant theta minus one. Or cosecant theta equals one. And we're just solving that? Plus cotangent theta. Oh, equals one plus cotangent theta. Yeah. Solving for theta, I guess. Uh, uh, solve the equation in the interval. Oh, uh, what's the interval? Zero to 360. 360. All right. So given that, and we're looking for theta in this case, um, <clears throat> it looks close to an identity, but the cosecant and the cotangent aren't squared here. So I'm actually going to try to get those to be squared so that I can relate those two terms together. I know they are related by a Pythagorean identity, so I want to be able to relate them together. I need to square both sides of this equation to do that. So I'm going to have cosecant of theta, square that, have one plus cotangent of theta, and square that. That means I'm going to need to FOIL that out. That's 1 plus cotangent of theta times 1 plus cotangent of theta. So that's 1 plus 2 cotangent theta plus cotangent squared. Make sure to multiply it out so that we don't forget this middle term here. Don't just square the one and square the cotangent because we missed that other term. Now I can rewrite, since I have the two cotangent on this side um, and the cotangent squared, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the cosecant squared in terms of cotangent. That way it's all in the same. Uh, and that way I just get rid of everything that's that has cosecant in it, and I only have terms that have cotangent. So cosecant squared of theta was equal to what? One plus cotangent squared theta? One plus cotangent squared. Okay. Then I'm going to subtract one from both sides. I'm going to subtract cotangent squared from both sides. I'm just going to be left with two cotangent of theta is equal to zero. So just cotangent of theta equals zero. But so you would divide by two, you go to the side of zero, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. Where is cotangent going to be equal to zero on 
the interval from zero to 360 degrees. So would we need to flip the reciprocal value first or would yeah, it work the Yeah, I mean, same? the easiest way to do this, because I would say, you know, you can write it as one over tangent, but the problem with that is then you'd be writing it as one over zero. It makes it a little weird. I would say, look at this as cosine over sine equal to zero because a fraction like that, a rational expression is only equal to zero when what is the case? When is that fraction equal to zero? When it's divided by number zero. When? It's zero on top. Yeah, this is, yeah, when we have zero in the numerator and not zero in the denominator, anything except zero in the denominator. So I'm just really, in this case, I'm looking for where is cosine of theta equal to zero on that interval. And so cosine of theta is equal to zero where? You mean 90? I mean 90 and two hundred and seventy. Yeah, well this answer just says ninety. I, I know. And there's a reason for that that okay. we're gonna get into. So those would be the two answers that come from this. Right. That's if that's all I was solving, that would give me where cotangent of theta is equal to zero. The one thing we have to remember about how we solve this, and I have to always make sure, uh, remind ourselves, if I square both sides of an equation, there is a chance that we end up with an extra solution or, or two or something like that, depending on what we did. So we always have to go back and check those answers in the original equation and make sure that they both work or that at least one of them works or maybe neither of them works. So we always want to make sure, uh, again, probably do this even if we don't square both sides of the equation, but definitely if we, if we square both sides, uh, there's a very good chance we end up with extra solutions. So make sure to go back and check to see if cosecant of 90 degrees is equal to one plus cotangent of 90 degrees. So cosecant's one over sine, sine of 90 is yeah. one. So this is just one. Cotangent of 90 is cosine over sine, as we just said, cosine of 90 is zero over one, so that's zero. So that answer works. So you wouldn't you couldn't just assume that this since it squared the bigger number's gone? The bigger the uh, yeah, one? don't assume that it's necessarily the bigger one. That, okay. That's the wrong answer. Because that it, it would depend on kind of what this looks like. Because we could do the same thing. The, the other thing is if this was a negative cosecant theta from the beginning, then 270 would actually be the right answer okay. and 90 would. But we'd still done it the same way. We'd still end up with the exact same thing by squaring both sides. Uh, so cosecant of 270 degrees. That's sort of it. Um, again, one over sine and sine of 270 is a negative one. So one over negative one is negative one. Cotangent of 270 is still zero. That's how we solved it. And so since negative one's not equal to one there, 270 is not gonna be an answer. So yeah, definitely always remember to check those, especially, especially if you square both sides of the equation. But like I say, and we can kind of see even from the beginning, if I said negative cosecant of theta from the beginning, um, I'd square both sides, I'd still end up with exactly what we had. It'd be cosecant squared, and then one plus two cotangent theta plus cotangent squared. It'd be the exact same way that we solved it the rest of the time, and I'd get those same two. But when I plug back in there, 90 would actually be the wrong answer, uh, or the extra answer that we had, and then 270 would be the right answer. All right. We have one more? Yeah, I got 10 minutes. Okay, so it's uh, question 11. So find the magnitude of direction angle to the nearest tenth for each vector. 
magnets. So they give you a measure direction angle as an angle of zero to three sixty. Negative four and negative three is the vector. The magnitude, yeah. So it's negative four. I might have I might have had this one right, but I don't think this is one of the changed after the fact. So we're back and redid it. So our, our vector is negative four, negative three, and we're looking for just magnitude and direction angle. Right. So to find the magnitude. I'm always just going to, I'm just going to call this vector V. I don't know if that's what it's called, but I'm going to use that. All I need to do is take the square roots of the horizontal components squared plus the vertical component squared. So I get the square root of 16 plus 9, square root of 25. And magnitude is just going to be equal to 5. If we're looking for the direction angle, V over A? Do y over X, yeah, it should be, if we're doing it that way, V over A. But vertical component over horizontal component, whichever way, whichever way that works. I mean, we're, we're, we're always doing the same thing. So tangent of theta is equal to, which so would be B, 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 should be three over four? Yeah, they three over negative four, just three fourths. So would this one be on there since it's no since this is a calculator question, or can this be solved without? Uh, this would not from this way be on there because yeah, you need a calculator for this. Uh, but I could do something similar where these numbers worked out to uh, you know square to two over two or something like that. <clears throat> so the one thing to remember about this, you plug this into a calculator, or even like I said, if this came out to square to two over two here. I would say that theta is equal to 45 degrees. The problem with that, whatever, whatever you get here, whatever inverse tangent of three fourths is, which would be about what? 36.9. 36.9. Obviously, that's not the direction angle for that particular vector that we have because that angle would be in the first quadrant and my vector is in the third quadrant. So in order to get the correct direction angle here, I would need to do what with this answer? Add 180. Yeah, add 180. degrees. So right. you draw these, I mean, so the key to this is draw the grid. I mean, draw it out that way you know where it's at. Yes, okay. definitely. Just do, and again, it doesn't even have to be, it doesn't have to be part of you, just, just to get an idea and make sure we know exactly what it is we're looking at and where the angle we should be finding goes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, good deal. So, yeah, I even did some, even did some problems there. Any questions about the final, what to expect on it, anything like that? If it sounds like my voice is extra, guys, because I was yelling at the baseball games on Friday and Saturday. Here in Logan? No, in Austin. So oh. I was, I, I won't say I was obnoxious, but I was, I was loud. They win? They won the first two. They won the, won the second one on Sunday before the third game because they had to suspend it. I didn't get to see the end of it. They were running or something? Yeah. Um, so Monday, uh, again, I won't see you guys this last day of class, so I won't see you guys before the final exam, even though it's a full week away. If you have questions, email me. I will reopen the homework. 
So you can do anything that you miss. If you if you have a 98 on the homework, then you want those last couple points, do that. I mean, probably not a huge deal to the grade, but you know, it never hurts. Plus, you can just go through stuff as a study guide too. And the the, uh, the homework, the, the section that you said that if we completed so much of it, then you should give extra credit for completing those couple ones that were just that you said that didn't matter. Or, that? Which one? I can't think of which one. Really. I'll go back and it's more. If it for out. some reason I didn't even try the last two or three, I'll, 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 I'll go back and figure it out. Yeah. But typically, that goes in the grave. It's hard for me to to adjust that. I don't even know if there's a way to adjust that in my lab yeah. by itself. But I'll, I'll go back and so the, well, how much did you say yeah. the homework grade was 15 15 percent yeah so a significant amount all right uh professor yeah you you said the finals on blackboard right yes okay I just wanted to confirm thank you yeah, it'll be the same same as before we won't change up the, the process of it so. perfect thank you yep no calculators this time. Turn it in. Turn it in at one o'clock. I mean, like I said, I'm not making the not making the test like two and a half times as long as the other ones. It'll it, at most like two times as long. So should have a bunch of extra time already built in. I will make the due time one fifteen, but don't don't push it. Don't just make sure you're not turning it in at 118 because it's worth 25 percent of the grade you don't want to have that as a zero all right good that's the last thing i say on this there should be no questions about it all right i will not ever see you guys this rest of the semester um but again, if you have questions, I don't know. It depends on what you take in the next few semesters. I might see you at some point. We'll see what they give me in the next ones. But uh, if you have any questions, email me. I I don't know. Ah, that's the one other thing. I don't have any plans, like specific plans to be around in my office. I will on various days for the rest of this week. But I don't know which days they are. So if you want to meet up in person to talk about stuff, um, between today and next Monday, let me know and I'll just, I'll come up to the office or I'll tell you I'm already going to be there at some point anyways, and we can work that out. But I, I don't have, I don't have a specific schedule that I was planning on being there. Uh, it's like normal office hours don't count after today, 